Let's talk about your Strengths Finder results. What can you actually do with your Strengths Finder or Clifton Strengths Assessment? But when we have this conversation, let's think beyond school or work topics. See, most people are introduced to Clifton Strengths through work or professional development. They hear stats like more than 90% of Fortune 500 companies have used Clifton Strengths as part of their company culture. So it makes sense that they take this tool and they categorize it as a workplace tool. They build walls limiting what they've learned to only one part of their life. In today's video, I invite you to consider each of these topics in all arenas of your life. That includes work, home, family, friends, community, hobbies, beliefs, goals, and even your dreams. Let's break through the walls with some examples of where you can apply what you learn from your results. Number one, relationships. How do your talent themes impact how you relate to others? Yeah, sure, that can include bosses or coworkers. This is why Clifton Strengths is heavily used in team development, but it also applies to your personal relationships. What about your family? such as your partner, your parents, even your children? How do you relate to your friends, acquaintances, even your neighbors? Are there certain people that you're just drawn to and others that you repel? Are there certain people that you work well with, maybe people you should date and others you should stay away from? What do you bring to relationships? What do you expect from others? A lot of times we think that our expectations from our relationships are obvious because we think that how we think is common. Everybody thinks that way. Everybody wants that from relationships, but it's not true. Working on your talent themes in relationships will open doors not only in understanding, but in cooperation. It'll help you drastically improve the way you relate to others and how you feel about yourself in the process. Activities. What kind of things do you do? Now, what do you do for work? What do you do when no one's looking? What are you drawn to? Do you like adventure, going out and exploring? Do you like mystery, collecting details and getting to the bottom of a question? Or do you like learning, going out, listening, discussing, having new experiences? You might say to me, hey, I like sitting on my couch and watching movies. Great. Do you do that by yourself? or do you invite others over? And what kind of movies do you watch? Do you watch adventure, mysteries, or educational movies? Growing up, I was a big movie buff. To this day, I still have my collection of movie stubs dating back to the 90s. And if you look at my favorite movies, they tend to be based on true life stories, usually inspirational, where the character has to dig deep, be vulnerable, have to take a chance, believe in something, and grow from the experience. And it wasn't until I explored my talent themes that I realized it made sense. These are the types of movies I'm drawn to. It's things like that that seem so small that made me realize that talent themes impact every aspect of your day. In fact, if you wanna learn more about that, specifically about you, how your talent themes impact you, your day to day, and how you can use them to transform your life, I invite you to my Talents in Action Masterclass. It's a free masterclass available right now. I'll put the link for you in the description, but let's jump to the next one. Number three, blind spots. What don't you see? You can't tell me because you don't know. Even when we know our blind spots, we keep forgetting because they're not natural to us. My talent themes tend to be in what Clifton Strengths calls the relationship building and executing domains, also known as categories. I've observed that my brain immediately goes to who's being affected and how can I do what needs to be done. I don't tend to think about strategies or influencing or abstract concepts. I immediately gravitate towards tangibles like people, things, and actions. So as I'm speaking to others and I'm using examples, I tend to immediately think about people-oriented or action-oriented examples. I'm biased in those directions. Blind spots are important for us to recognize our biases. What don't you see? What perspectives are you neglecting that could surprise you or hurt you or someone else in the long run? Number four, problem solving. I'm curious, what kind of problems are you trying to solve? Do me a favor, comment below and give me an idea of what kind of problems are you trying to solve in your life? Are you trying to create new habits? Are you trying to break an old one? 
Are you trying to increase your income? Maybe have more free time? Trying to figure out how to connect better with others. What are you doing to address these topics? Chances are you're doing more of the same things. Turning up the volume on methods that just aren't working. What about leaning into your talent themes? Trying them out in new ways. I was working with somebody who was in one of my workshops and she saw everything through the lens of her number one talent theme, Achiever. This theme dominated what she did, how she did it, even impacted her self-worth, how she measured her own value. When we met, she had just changed careers, so she was starting from the bottom. She wasn't getting those daily highs from being an expert like she did at her old career. And to make things worse, the pandemic hit, so she was at a low. Part of what we worked on together was for her to lean into other talent themes. She leaned into her learner and started creating systems that not only benefited her, but others in the workplace. And as a result, she started building her confidence and getting a high that satisfied the achiever side of her. Not only was she learning new approaches to give her a sense of accomplishment at work, she was learning new approaches to help her with problem solving in general, whether it be at work, at home, or in other aspects of her life. Number five, decision making. Why do you gravitate towards certain options? Is it because it's a safe thing to do or is it because it's pushing you towards your goals? Again, we're thinking about more than just work. We're thinking about all aspects of your life. Where do you want to live? What do you want to do? Who do you want to spend time with? Do you even want to be in a relationship? Do you want a family? What do you want to believe? How do you want to live your life? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be remembered? What do you think is influencing the answers to those questions? You guessed it, your talent themes. Your talent themes impact your needs and your values. They color how you perceive things and thus it's gonna impact your decision making. Earlier I talked about relationships and blind spots and our biases. It's all interconnected and it's gonna impact what options you believe are even available for you. Your Clifton Strengths results aren't professional, they're personal. Take what you're learning from your results and apply them in all aspects of your life. I challenge you to take it beyond the workplace. All aspects of your life are interconnected. And the more you dive into it, the more you're gonna get out of it. I encourage you to learn more about your talent themes so you can use them deliberately as tools throughout your day. Again, I invite you to my free Talents in Action Masterclass so you can learn more about your talent themes how they impact you directly, how they impact your day to day, and how you can use them to transform your life. The masterclass is free, it's available now, and the link is in the description. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. And I invite you to check out these other videos to learn more about Clifton Strengths and what you can do with your results. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.